This is Earth. It is filled with life, ranging from the simplest bacteria to modern humans. While we do not know exactly how or when life first appeared on Earth, we do know that it was somewhere around 3.8 billion years ago in an era known as the Archean, and that over the course of those billions of years it evolved to its current state of abundance and complexity. This was an incredibly slow process, fraught with many twists and turns. The history of the evolution of life is normally described as gradual and monotonous, with little to no action occurring on a humanly comprehensible timescale. Throughout most of the Earth's history, this is an accurate description of the evolutionary process. However, there are several instances that contradict this notion. Over the eons, numerous mass extinctions and other monumental events have caused massive upheaval as they shifted the planet towards the world we know today. However, there is one such transpiration without which the incredible story of the evolution of life would never have been told. When the Earth first formed, it was a hellish place, with a surface of lava, poisonous air, and no liquid water. Meteorites bombarded the surface constantly, vaporizing any primeval life forms. Billions of years later, after the surface cooled and oceans formed, an inanimate soup of organic molecules began to self-organize and became the first life on Earth. This life was very simple, lacking almost all of the structures that characterize modern cells, such as a nucleus and mitochondria. Over billions of years, life slowly began to change and grow in complexity. But even after 3.3 billion years of evolution, the Earth's biosphere consisted only of a slew of microbes and a few sparse and unimpressive invertebrates. Uh, life on Earth was predicated on self-replicating reactions among proteins and RNA. While life had lain stagnant for much of the Earth's history, all of that was about to change in a relative blink of an eye. Approximately 540 million years ago, in a time period known as the Cambrian, the diversity and abundance of life began to skyrocket, transforming an essentially dead planet into a world abounding with wondrous animal forms. This revolutionary event, known as the Cambrian Explosion, was solely responsible for the creation of all animal groups that exist today including arthropods, mollusks, and chordates, which include the mammals and humans. Nevertheless, 340 million years ago, these creatures looked nothing like their descendants do today. Fish, reptiles, octopi, and insects all had yet to evolve. Instead, there were the trilobites, Pikaia, Wawaxia, the five-eyed Opabenia, and many other strange and wondrous creatures. The top predator of this ancient sea was the deadly Anomalocaris. These creatures were the product of an incredible event. Within a mere 30 million years, life diversified more than it had during all of the eons since it first appeared. Despite much debate over the specific causes, enough is known to conclusively say that without the Cambrian explosion, or another similar revolution, none of the Earth's modern animals would have come into existence. One of the most well-known and prevalent classes of animals during the Cambrian were the trilobites, primitive arthropods that were one of the most successful and widespread organisms of all time. They were important not only because of their success as a species, but how they interacted with other species. Trilobites were the weavers of the Earth's first food web, in which predator, producer, and prey all struggled for survival for the first time. Battles were fought by a simple code, eat or be eaten. Competition among all these new animals further accelerated the evolutionary process and laid the groundwork for how life on Earth would progress for the next half a billion years. In this new world, the top predator was a strange creature called Anomalocaris canadensis. So Anomalocaris is thought to be a very vicious predator. They might have gotten up to be a meter long, so they'd be big and they'd be able to crunch on things. And there are a lot of trilobites, like similar to this trilobite, that have a bite mark taken out of them that matches the mouth of Anomalocaris. A lesser known, and yet equally important species, was Picaia gracilans, the oldest known ancestor of modern vertebrates and, by extension, humans. It was also the first animal to have a head-like structure, including various sensory organs and a spinal cord. While Picaia was not of incredible importance to the ecosystems of the Cambrian, 
Its vertebrate descendants would later come to dominate the entire world during the rest of the Phanerozoic Eon. The Cambrian explosion caused massive reforms in the paleontological sciences. Animal fossils from the Cambrian had been discovered as early as the 1830s by Adam Sedgwick and Roderick Murchison in a series of rocky outcrops in Cambria, from which the Cambrian period derives its name. These fossils did not receive much attention until 1909, when Charles Walcott discovered massive fossil beds of Cambrian animals in the Burgess Shale Formation in the Rocky Mountains. He collected some 65,000 fossils over the course of 20 years, and within a few decades, the huge deposits of exceptionally well-preserved fossils made the significance of the Cambrian fauna undeniable. The apparent rate of evolution shown by the Burgess Shale fossils was quite a shock to the scientific community. Scientists thought that evolution only occurred at incredibly slow rates over immense timescales, but this new evidence contradicted their ideas. Charles Darwin, founder of the theories of evolution and natural selection, went as far as to consider the explosion a possible counter-argument to his theories. In recent years, more accurate methods of geological dating and the discovery of Precambrian microfossils have reduced the apparent rate of evolution to more reasonable levels, but the Cambrian explosion's impact on both the planet and the sciences remains enormous. The Cambrian explosion is really a time that allows us to mark when fossils were solid and heavily built and therefore it could leave an external fossil skeleton. And so the reasons for that could be a change in ocean chemistry, a change in water chemistry. It could also be the release of methane from a, a methane ice that was deep in the ocean. Even if we don't know why the Cambrian explosion happened, we still know it did happen and we would like to strive for an explanation for that as well. While the Cambrian explosion created untold multitudes of new forms of life, it produced a reaction that brought its fair share of death as well. Before the Cambrian, in the Proterozoic Eon, most life consisted of large mats of microbes living in symbiotic colonies. These structures were originally responsible for oxygenating our atmosphere, as they absorb carbon dioxide and emit molecular oxygen, which is poisonous to them. Since their first appearance more than 3.5 billion years ago, the scarcity of macroscopic, mogul organisms meant that there was little to disturb these fragile colonies. However, once the advanced fauna of the Cambrian started spreading throughout the seas, these microbial mats were often damaged by the increased bioturbation from all the organisms walking and swimming overhead, as well as the holes produced by burrowing organisms such as Atoya. This not only damaged the colonies physically, but saturated the ocean floor with oxygen-rich seawater, which killed off the oxygen-intolerant microbes. As complex organisms invaded the seas, they created a reaction that transformed the planet into the place we know today. While microbial mats still flourish, most of those living in shallow seas were trampled, burrowed, and choked to death in what became known as the Cambrian Substrate Revolution. Once the complexity had increased to a certain extent, then it was a matter of finding niches. And the niches uh, are, are manifold, and, and as long as life can evolve and change, niches will be filled. So here we are, we're looking at chemicals. And we're looking at the boundary in time between life and no life. As our epic journey through the past draws to a close, we can truly come to appreciate exactly how profoundly our world has been affected by ancient revolutions. Every macroscopic organism that exists today, including us, owes their life to the events of the Cambrian. Now, pause a while and think about the incredible changes that have occurred in this ancient era. Think of the trilobites, swimming and crawling through the water, of Anomalocaris, the terrifying apex predator, and of Pekaya, ancestor of all modern vertebrates. Think of Wawaxia, Opabenia, Atoya, and all of the other extraordinary creatures that once shaped our world. We all owe our existence to the life of ages past, but above all, we must acknowledge the eminence of this fundamental revolution that we call the Cambrian Explosion.